Dr. Garcia, thanks so much for being with us today. Vein Magazine really appreciates the time that you've taken to talk to us about chronic DVT. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. So, chronic DVT, we all know what it is, and we all know that patients suffer. Tell me what's being done right now in the space to help improve the quality of life of DVT and what you presented this year at the VEAT Symposium. Well, uh, as you mentioned, it, chronic DVT um, is uh, an unfortunate affliction uh, for patients who have suffered uh, DVT in the past. And uh, it is a uh, sequelae that, that can in incredibly limit patients' uh, activity levels, lifestyle, um, and can be a tremendous burden on society for the cost that it may incur. And so what we've been able to do is to have uh, develop a multi-center study that looks at aggressive management or treatment for patients that are suffering from chronic DVT. Uh, this population uh, can have a constellation of problems from pain and swelling all the way to venous ulceration that can be very difficult to manage and very painful. And so what we were able to find early on in evaluating and treating these patients is that we've been able to develop a method that in our single center registry was showing significant improvement in the quality of life and in many resolution of, of post-thrombotic syndrome altogether. And this led to uh, support from uh, ECHOS and BTG um, to develop a multi-center study that allows us to evaluate these patients, use the treatment algorithm that we designed, and follow these patients with objective measures to see how they do and whether or not there has been a significant improvement in their quality of life and in the ability to restore flow in these previously and chronically occluded venous segments. Uh, so. So, so tell us a little, a little bit about how, um, let's say, the ECHOS technology works. Um, we hear about low-dose TPA. What is the, the value of the ultrasound, and how does that benefit the chronic DVT patient? Yeah, so there, there is a lot of debate as, uh, currently as to what this may be doing in the chronic venous world. Um, but what I can tell you in my uh, sort of personal experience has been that in the, in the technique that we use, once we, uh, the real challenge is crossing the occluded, the chronically occluded venous segments. But once you're able to cross using standard catheter techniques, what we do is uh, create working space by dilating the occluded venous segments to an expected size of the normal vein. And by doing that, uh, we create a channel that we then place the ecosystem in, which I will describe in a second. But during that initial dilatation, oftentimes you will get an acute thrombosis. So the thought, the theory behind what we uh, proposed was that the TPA itself is treating the acute clot that's being formed by us being and working in this venous segment. What ECOS brings to the table is this ultrasound enhanced technology where ultrasound waves and transducers within the catheter system um, allow for deeper penetration of, of the TPA medicine into the clot. But what I have found, it's, it, it's enhanced ability to soften some of this chronic fibrin stranding and scarring that's in the vein. Uh, for example, I've seen over and over again uh, the inability to dilate segments with high pressure balloons because of a very tight stricture that were unable to completely stretch or break. And after the Echo's ultrasound waves have been in there, usually overnight, when the patients return for the follow-up, that stricture is very easy to break and to open the venous segment and restore the flow through there. So 
there is some, I think, scientific evidence that needs to be worked out, but clinically, what I'm seeing in our cases is that there is an improvement in being able to stretch that vein and restore flow, and I think it's because of the ultrasound waves that are working through the night. So the access study, now how many centers are currently enrolling patients in the United States? So we have 30 centers in the study, um, and currently we have 72 patients enrolled as of this week, with 41 having been treated. What about public awareness? Many people are really unaware about DVT in general. What about public awareness as it relates to chronic DVT? Do our hospitals putting out protocols relative to how to treat DVT? Are doctors in their practices giving the education to the patients? What are you seeing currently happening or not happening public-wise? Unfortunately, uh, there has been very little uh, uh, work or uh, education around chronic uh, DVT across the country and across the world. It's really being driven by uh, a small group of interventionalists, vascular specialists, that uh, may see these patients. And oftentimes, um, the, the awareness is, based by, uh, is found by the patient themselves on the internet, looking for some help. And the sad part of this is, in this day and age, worldwide, uh, and, and, and certainly within the US, uh, patients are often told there's nothing that can be done. You have to learn to live with your symptoms, wear your compression stockings, maybe you get anticoagulation to help thin the blood. But in general, there is not anything being offered. The vast majority of patients I see who fly from across the country and even from other parts of the world uh, have been told this and have been suffering for years until they are very excited to hear that some work has been done. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, can, I can personally tell you, having treated hundreds of patients with chronic DVT, that invariably you see a lot of happy, smiling faces, um, incredible thanks, because you have changed their life by improving their quality, which we've been able to show objectively by uh, measuring not only the, the, the leg itself, measuring the circumference of the leg and showing you know, significant reduction and normalization of the size of the leg, but also by using Velalta scoring, which is a chronic venous scoring measure that um, uses both clinical signs and symptoms of the patient to give a score. And we've seen a tremendous amount in our registry um, uh, that, that, that demonstrates the benefit of being able to intervene on these patients and showing their improvement in their quality of life. It all sounds exciting. I can't wait to hear the final outcome of the ACCESS study. And I want to thank you again for being with Zane Magazine today. Well, thank you very much.